Retrobrite! So what is basically a Retrobrite? After a few video recommendations YouTube has been suggesting me for the past months, I've gone down into the rabbit hole of retro console restoration and I've been fascinated ever since. Retrobriting a console is basically bleaching the plastics of the console to restore it to its original color, since most of the consoles tend to yellow after being exposed to UV light or just basically sunlight. Especially if the console is like 20 to 30 years old, so you could imagine how a console from the 90s would look like nowadays, and how the surrounding environment takes a toll on a console's appearance during its lifetime. The target of this project is to bring the appearance internally but mostly externally by restoring the original color of the console. So why do you actually need to retrobrite a console? And why aren't there more people talking about this cool concept? At first, I thought I needed some type of crazy scientific grade chemicals, but after doing my research, to which links can be found down in the description below, I found out that what you actually need is hydrogen peroxide, which is basically the main ingredient, or is it? Hey, Vsauce, Michael here. For the most part, yes it is, which is fairly basic and easy to find, but you will also have to expose it for a quite a bit of time under UV light. So for the hydrogen peroxide, it is used in many cases like when the hair salon lady wants to bleach a customer's hair, or it can be found in your local pharmacy store sold as a mild antiseptic. The catch is that the fact that you actually need a fairly high volume one, which then you can adjust and water down if you intend to treat a large amount of plastics. Well, it wasn't until recently that I was able to try it out myself and see if it actually works. As a retro enthusiast, when a friend of mine brought me this SNES a few weeks ago that he found during a cleanup of his old storage house, needless to say that I was very excited about this antique of a retro piece and more so about trying the retrobrite technique on it and restore the console to its original state. So what I did was basically go online and find the cheapest highest volume of hydrogen peroxide that I paid like 4 bucks for the whole liter of this stuff. After watching a few videos on YouTube, I got the general idea and I felt pretty confident about myself. So from here on now, the steps were clear to me. At first, I had to check if the console was in a working condition at all before proceeding. And voila! And by the way, thank god that the console was retrieved, having at least one game with it. Since I can confidently say that it not only turns on, but also can play games. Otherwise, I'm not sure if I would have been able to check it. After that's out of the way, I had to take apart the console. As a tech savvy guy, it was no challenge for me, but I did follow a great video tutorial just to be sure, which I will link in the video description for anyone interested. After the disassembly process, it was time to clean the plastics. Steady but surely, the cleaning process took the most amount of time since all that gunk that's been building up during all these years had to go in order to start the next step. In the meantime, while my slave friend was cleaning the rest of the part, it was now time to prepare the hydrogen peroxide itself. Now there are a few ways you can do this according to the YouTube specialist. The first one is to just dump the hydrogen peroxide in a large container and submerge everything. And the second one, which consists of making the hydrogen peroxide into a paste-like consistency using cornstarch, applying it on the part and covering everything with a clear foot film. Now this last method I consider to be the most controversial because I've seen many people having problems with marbling or some white spots while using this method, but I've also seen many others having great results while at the same time using a significantly smaller amount of the product. So after considering both of these methods, I chose to go with the second one and started preparing the mixture. After some mixing and microwaving, the mixture was ready to be applied on the clean parts wrapping them in the transparent film and ready to be left under direct sunlight for one full sunny day. I noticed that the process was successful and I was really happy, except for the part of the console that still had a lot of yellowing unfortunately. So I decided to do the same thing the next day, but only for the top case cover part. And when I thought it was ready and removed the transparent sheet, I quickly became very disappointed. So that's when I realized that I've made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment. Oh no, I've made this even worse, I said to myself. The plastic part felt very different and flimsy. And some of the writings were so washed out, I could barely tell what they said. With lots of marbling as well, and it had this weird feeling to it. So what I did next was I really got stressed out about it. And all I wanted to do now was to just clean it as fast as I could and see how the final product was looking. 
while I was stressfully cleaning it up with this brush. That's when I realized that the plastics got way weaker and the vent holes on the back just completely shattered on me. How is this even possible? Oh my god, after so much work. Oof, I almost felt like it was all for nothing. And at this point, I had to calm down. And once I did, I figured out I continue way carefully this time and try to use some super glue to fix the part that broke on me. So after one slip, I was back on track and proceeded to concentrate on putting the console back together and see if it still worked. And surely enough it did. The thing is, I wasn't worried at all if it would work, but instead, I was mostly worried about the top part of the case that's being shattered into pieces and Frankenstein back together and unfortunately not having this clean look anymore. Anyways, I consider the Retro Rider a success. And in conclusion, if you do it correctly, then you will probably get the desirable results. It is unfortunate though that on the last moment things went south on me. And there you go, so this is the story of how I dipped my toes into the console restoration rabbit hole. Thank you so much for watching, if you liked the video please leave a like, it helps me out. If you liked the video and want to see more of this stuff, please leave a like, it helps me out. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And I'd love to hear in the comments below about your console restoration or retro brightening experiences. Bye bye!